you're listening to a Mash Those Buttons podcast. Visit mashthosebuttons.com for a full podcast schedule. Cargo secured. Extraction complete. Intelligent system analytic computer is activated. All ISAT systems are confirmed online. Data scanned. Downloading files. What's up guys, you're listening to episode 80 of Sibrap Radio, giving you the news and other happenings in the world of the Division. And we have a packed show for you this week, as we're going to be discussing the state of the game, which seems to be back on track. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about an E3 2013 video trailer that was shown a long time ago, and why it's not the game we have today. Uh, Rob, you challenged listeners last week to answer, to send you, not answer, 60 questions, and the listeners delivered. So... I challenged uh, them to send the show questions. They've kind of been really specific to me. But thank that you being anyway. the case, if there's enough time, we'll have a short ideas for Massive and potentially tease a new segment coming to the show in the future. But first, my name's Mike, and joining me, as I'm sure you've already heard, is my co-host Robert. Hello. And Luke. Hello. I hope you beautiful fellas have had an awesome week, as well as our listeners. Uh, we do have a lot to talk about today. Well, some of us do. So let's get on with some news. The state of the game. So the state of the game is back to normal after the last few weeks, as it's been in a bit of a disarray. Uh, community manager Petter, or junior community manager, however you want to put that, uh, te- was joined by Terry and Keith over at Redstorm today and they were basically sat down to discuss update 1.8 uh and a lot of the pts feedback that was given to them by the community and kind of give you the players a bit of an insight to how we might not look at things the same way or how they might not look at things the same way as we do uh but just to tell you guys straight up there is at the minute no update 1.8 release date as of now uh, I just want to go to you guys quick. If you guys could make a guess, when can you see it dropping? Last, Luke? last week in November. That's my guess. Oh, thanks, Luke. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did you say Luke? Does my I'll, yeah. I'll go the week before. I was looking at the calendar, and I think twenty first. It's like three weeks, isn't it? So I know. I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to swap swap, swap it over. So you're wrong. <laughs> you know, you got to answer those bloody questions. No, I didn't hear you say Luke. I bloody refuse. Well, no, they've they've closed the PTS, right? They're going to tweak for a week. It takes at least two weeks for Sony to approve it. So, yeah, I'd say Tuesday the 28th is my guess. Well, we'll see if you're right in a couple of weeks. Uh, That being the case, uh, as as we said, uh, Terry and Keith basically tried to give us a kind of a dev insight of how they look into things on their ends. Uh, they reckon the PTS went very well. And I've got to be honest, I think this is the most feedback we've had on a PTS in the last year since 1.4. There's been a lot of feedback in the community, um, good, bad, constructive, however you want to put it. Everybody's kind of come out the world, woodwork to kind of give feedback on this, even ourselves. Uh, we've been tested on the PTS uh, and they basically went in today and discussed that the PTS kind of allows developers to get all the data from the community, social media, you name it, the the YouTube, Reddit, official forums, and it's basically their way of deciphering what is the best step forward for certain stats in the game, one of which being builds. Luke, do you want to talk about some thing that they discussed on the state of the game today. Uh, yeah, so Terry and Keith, they they went into detail on on obviously the two specific builds that the the community has given an awful lot of feedback about. I think us three included were were quite vocal on on these two. Um, no surprises for guessing it's Nomad and Predator's Mark. Um, I think we're all in the they're too powerful camp, but Terry and Keith seem to think that they're specifically powerful rather than too powerful um i I just want to jump in there and just say like i'm pretty sure with most of the six piece 
builds that we've seen we we are all kind of like these are really freaking powerful so i know the whole community is kind of like predators absolutely freaking op at the minute but i am interested to see how they're going to play out in the live game once everybody's running them that being the case i'd seen something interesting it was on our discord i think i can't remember who said it but um they might be pulling the meta strings, so to speak. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that was like the alpha bridge meta we, we had back in 1.5. Yeah. If, if they are, then it's kind of clever because it gives everyone to, it gives everyone something to, to get and then they'll change it again. So it gives something else to get. No. Well, if you think about it, we we've already done this, haven't we? We did it with Alpha Bridge back in the day with with one point five, and it's kind of a case if everybody's running the same build, it creates. We uh, we've discussed this many episodes ago. Like it creates a balance. Everybody's going to be chasing Predator's Mark because the amount of bleed damage it's causing, um, which effectively is going to cause ev everybody to have pretty much the same build because they will follow certain YouTubers. Plus, we've got optimization, so we're all going to be running max stacks at some point as well. So, hell yeah, bring on normalization. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Luke, I interrupt you. That's all right. You seem to do it every week. Woo! <laughs> um, no, Terry and Keith were saying they're intentionally powerful. Um, Predators is is obviously powerful in PVE as well as PvP. Nomad, for example, gives you what five lives i think it is or whatever if you get it to pop enough times um i think they used another example during state of the game that obviously reclaimer is is very powerful but all your power is built into your support station so with predator's mark obviously all your power is in that bleed because literally everything else is rolled into stamina the argument i've got with predator's mark is obviously you're doing an awful lot of damage whilst you're tanky as hell as well so i i can see where i mean for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, when you listen to this, go and check out Marco Stahl's recent Reddit post because that that puts Predator's Mark into a lot of perspective. Um, Just thinking about that, like, what if they? I'm not saying it should ever happen, but what what if they completely switched it over and had it so you had to stack into like firearms instead? Would that fix the the issue? I'm not saying it would. No, that make it worse. If you, no, Surely. all right, okay. Maybe, maybe if they did something like you don't do firearms damage, but you do bleed damage instead. Does that make sense? No. If they did something along those lines, so you would fight, like obviously you have massive firearms, uh, but you still would be able to do the same amount of bleed that you do with stamina, but you wouldn't have the stamina that you would now. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think I'd... Uh... I think it's fine. I think we just need a counter for it. I think so the, bleed, we'll, the bleed is is the fact that you can't get rid of the bleed with um, it's, uh, immunizer doesn't work, does it? Is that right? Well, the the way the the problem with immunizer is the predator's mark set doesn't count your resistance to bleed, so it it doesn't count the immunizer. So you almost have to go out of the immunizer, go into the immunizer once you've got your bleed on, then go back out of the immunizer because you know you're going to get shot by the same Predator's Mark build again. So you're forever running in and out of the Reclaimer Circle, which is again a good point that Marco Star brought up because for a Reclaimer and a for a claimer to work well against Predator's Mark, you almost need your Reclaimer Circle to be as small as possible so you can be in the field of, <laughs> like within the small area of fighting but still be close to the edge of your circle so you can st keep popping in and out oh. of the reclaimer circle, which kind of nullifies yeah, the, the irony, point of the having a reclaimer. That, yeah. yeah. The irony of the fact then, that the, the build makes your circle as big as it possibly can. And the fact that Marco's put out a video saying run seven and a half percent yep. range mods. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, like, I'm pretty sure I've seen it's builds out funny. there having extended range mods on it. But. The, the other, I think time's going to tell on that, isn't it? Well, the, the other thing that Marco Style points out is that the bleed doesn't work against NPCs when they're in their um, immune station. 
So the argument that Terry and Keith put that it's excellent in PvE, yeah, it might be, but in endgame PvE, it's not going to be that brilliant because we've all come across waves of medics in legendaries and no doubt they'll be in resistance where they don't just put one pack down because they don't come on their own. There's four of them with a pack each. So you've got no damage left because you've got no firearms. You're still not going to be that tanky against NPCs because of their 95% accuracy and you can't make them bleed. So then what do you do? And their argument is that obviously it's, it's brilliant in PvE. Maybe it needs toning down a little bit for PvP, but we'll see where it goes in the live game, which kind of defeats the object of it being in the PTS in the first place if they're not going to listen to us. Second of all, it's not that brilliant for actual endgame PvE. So where does it sit? I don't know. I think we're just going to have to wait and see when it finally lands and how the other builds stack up against it. Because the, the, the other problem that we see with the PTS is that everybody r- tends to run the same thing. And I know that if people have been testing this, you know, testing the hell out of it properly, hopefully using other builds, obviously you've got the awesome people like Marcus Style, Wiz, and other people out there. So we'll just have to see. Um, I'm sure you have certain people asking people if they bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Will you bleed? Trust me, everybody's going to bleed in 1.8. Do bleed, you will. That being the case, something I think we called last week, and they actually, what's the word? Acknowledged. I think they were. Acknowledged, confirmed, was that defense gear set is pretty much going to be solely for the ballistic shield. That is going to be, that's what they want. That's what they've wanted from the start. And I, I said this last week that they're trying to make the defense gear set the dedicated build for shields. You know, there's so many different builds, builds that you can run with the shield previously. And we, you know, we've all seen it. I think, was it like tacticians and de- uh, defense or D3 or Rob? Century. Can you think of anymore? Century pistol. Yeah, Century. So I kind of understand that. But it also kind of feels like, they don't want four defense build players running all the PvE content, just mowing everything down. So rip those GE events, I guess. Because that was good fun. I haven't run defense since it came out, pretty much. I think I did it for like a week and then I just like, nah. But yeah. Hopefully, it is actually a tank build, but uh, I guess we have to see. It's, I keep saying we'll have to see, but it's like we're only saying that because we don't know how it's going to play out. I mean, we think we know how it's going to play out because of the PTS, but apparently we're wrong. Don't know. Uh, Rogue 2.0 as we said last week, is going to go live as is. Um, I mean, they said on the state of the game, they have made a lot of changes, um, but they obviously want to keep the main idea of um, the manhunt stations being used to turn your manhunt or your rogue stats off. Uh, Obviously, friendly fire is still going to be a thing. But things like uh, 60 seconds has been increased for the initial row ty- timer instead of the 19 seconds. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I like the fact they've changed the group management. You can't piss around with your group management settings, dropping in and out. Also a good idea. Uh, Banshee. Yeah. Banshee was pretty good, if I remember, in the PTS. Not as good as some of the other ones, but it was pretty good. And uh, yeah, they've nerfed that a little bit. But how do you feel about the explanation that we were given, guys? Because it was kind of like, you know, there's so much to do in the DZ. Um, you know, you're doing, you're extracting, you're farming, and you're doing your supply drops. And then you see a rogue person come up i mean the 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 fact that they've actually reduced where what was it the range on the the rogue mission turning up haven't they um but 
I kind of feel like those are all ideal situations. Like, oh, I'm going to go do this. I mean, maybe it's just us. It, it, it could be like a really skewed perspective because we do PVE, but you know, Luke, you do solo play in the dark zone. Rob, I know you do as well. I know you don't go fighting people all the time, but I know Luke, you don't give a shit if you're a solo player going up against four other people. Oh. As I found out over the past f- couple of weeks. Um, so how do you feel about the answer that was given today for why it's being kept the same? Rob, do you want to go first? No. <laughs> um, I, it, I'm going to be very harsh here and I'm, I'm going to ask whether or not Terry and Keith actually play much of their own game. <laughs> because... Well, I'm, I'm guessing they do, but maybe there's people out there that play it a lot more. I don't know. Well, there's ov- right, all right. There's obviously people that play it a lot more than they do because, as as a person, as you rightly say, a person that goes in the dark zone, and I don't give a shit whether I'm in a team of one or a team of four. If I see rogues pop up on the map, I'll go and find out where they are and try and take them down. And likewise, I'm not scared about going rogue on my own. I'm not saying I'm very good at it. It usually ends in death, but it's fun. Or your own team. Yeah. It's, it's, it's what the Dark Zone was advertised as in my eyes, and it's where I've had almost all my fun in this game yeah. in the Dark Zone. No question. Um, and the reason I question whether Terry O'Keefe actually play their game or play a lot of their game is Terry's explanation for why they want the Manhunt loop to be the way it is so that it's relatively unchanged as to where it was on the PTS was he said they will be players going to extractions and just farming gear, which... Yeah, that might be the case now because they've changed the way that the rogue system works. So you probably get more farmers in the DZ. He then said that people would not really care about manhunt timers going off because there'd be supply drops in the DZ. They're once per hour, I believe. They usually drop at the same time as the contaminated event. So that's not going to keep people busy at a separate time. You're either doing one or the other pretty much at the same time. Um... Or he, he was saying that other people will be clearing manhunt. So he was like basically dividing the server up into four or five different types of people all at once. Now, for anybody who plays the Dark Zone a lot like we do, certainly like I do and a lot of our Discord do, that's not how a DZ server runs. Most people are in yeah, the DZ because say- they've done everything else and they're bored of everything else. They've got all the gear that they need. The only gear that most of us ever want anymore is from the global events. So most people go in the dark zone looking for other people to shoot in the face. Therefore, if you've got four people running around with a manhunt terminal that's flashing up on the map, they will be where that terminal is. I will say this. I do agree with him on one point with regards to if a player is extracting and then, oh, there's regs pop up. But those are going to be the PvP players. They're the ones that have just killed the freaking non-rogues They've extracted their loot. All right, let's go kill some other motherfuckers. Me and you. You know, that's literally how it's going to roll. Me and you were in the dark zone the other night as a team of two. How many extractions did we pop off? Can you remember? A, f- a fair f- few. Three, four. Yeah. How many times did other players turn up to either gank us or try and get in on our extraction just because it happened to be popping off at the same time? Quite a few. Pretty- a lot. Every time. Most of the times it was quickly followed by a shot grenade or a shot turret and somebody going rogue. If, if there's, a, if there's the something what? on the map advertising where players are, players will go towards it like a moth to flame. Okay, but I will say this. I can understand why they've done it. I, I'm not disregarding all the faults that we see with it at all. I'm not disregarding that. that is, in my opinion, that is still there, but I can understand what they're trying to do. Are trying to please would you be happy? the PvE is, yeah, no. as well as the PvP is. Would you be happy if there's more people in the dark zone? Yes. Would you be happy killing anything that moves in the dark zone? It doesn't matter if it's hardcore players or fresh blood. Yes. This is the gateway. And it might not be happy for everybody, but if PvE players are like, Oh man, they've changed the rogue system. I'm going back. It's it's for us. It's for the PVE players. So be it. Because we are still going to go in there and fucking kill them. I don't give two fucking shits. We are still yeah, going to go I, in there and kill them. I, I will still be in the dark zone. I will still be going rogue. You know, I'll have to hold the up button and stop running at the same time, which is right. stupid. But- okay. 
here's, here's the other thing. People are pissed about, oh, I can't run off my manhunt. There's no stat in the game. There's no official stat in the game, is there? Or is it? Or is there natural? I can't remember if it's on the leaderboards. Or not. Uh, is there, is it's on the sometimes on the leaderboards, and there is a commendation for surviving fifty okay. of them. Yes, but that's it. Sometimes, and once you've got your commendation, you've you've got it. What is the reward for running off your manhunt at the minute? Yeah, but a few DZ credits. I'd, I'd like to state right now, I have my manhunt survived commendation. I can guarantee you, less than five of those were earned by running away. Most of them, if not all of them, were earned by standing where I was and fighting it off. That's all we've ever done when we've been married. No, no, I, I agree. I agree. But at the end of the day, it doesn't. Like, I pro if we go rogue, chances are we're not going to run for the manhunt station. We'll probably just still yeah, we'll stand there and fight them off. Because at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, we have played this game for a year, was it a year and a half yeah. now? Yeah, the loot if you're in the dark. We have never been given a fuck about the rewards at the end of Manhunt ever and oh you can get exhausted I, I don't give a crap for that thing is and I know there's people that do but I'm looking at that's the only way I can see positive from this thing is we've got a bit of a different view than the a developer side but I can understand where they're coming from because obviously 1.0 is going to bring a lot of people back to the back to the game right including PvE players who are going to want to go Gosh, and fly in the dark zone so they can't just um, do the Rogue 2.0 system around the players that have been playing it for the last two years because that's not all the, all the people, all the it's players. It's not the whole community yeah, at the end I, of the day. I completely understand I could that. agree with that. And I, I, I like the premise behind Rogue 2.0. Like Rogue 1.0 was obviously brokenly skewed towards people who could just run up behind you and kill you before you even knew where the bullets were coming from. We all know that. Anybody who says that that's not how Rogue 2.0 was uh, Rogue 1.0 was skewed is lying to themselves. What I don't agree with is is some of the ways that they've changed Rogue to make it Rogue 2.0. I don't think some of it makes a lot of sense like the grenade spam for example will just get out of control. Yeah, or, yes. Well, like that makes said, a very I, valid I completely... point. But then, I completely like, yes. I think we all agree. I just want to state for the record, like we all agree with that. We we're not happy with the great grenade spam. I would like friendly fire to be a thing in between um, non hostiles. Um, obviously, it's a lot more work required to make that happen without people going to rogue. Um, because I think it should be something similar to siege, where if you sh accidentally shoot your own team, maybe you should have the same situation outside of your group you're not causing them to go rogue straight away but you're not causing yourself to go rogue straight away if you shoot another player but you cause them damage and which would th th thin out the amount of players chasing you but we have to see because this could play out pretty even once we have a shitload of pve players in there you could be fighting you know 10 freaking pve players and you know it's incentive to make people chase them isn't it at the end uh, of the day uh, uh, as a counterpoint to my argument um, <laughs> you're going to argue with yourself like, yeah eventually those PV players are going to get bored of farming and turn into PV players like ourselves and th th there's just not going to be a longevity with that system I think it it's going to work for about a month and uh, maybe even less than that and then it's just going to be screwed but at the core of it, what's changing a huge amount? We're still, I, I still honestly think we're going to have the chicken dance. Who's going to go rogue first? The only difference is who's going to push the button first opposed to who's going to shoot first. Mm. That, there's still going to be, I think, some of the same core issues that we have now. All the emotes. They're just going to, they're going to be in, introduced in a different way, slightly different way. Yeah. We should we'll move see. on because we could do our episode on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could. We could. But perhaps we should come back to this once uh, 1.8. Well, I'm sure we will. We'll come back to this on 1.8 and um, we'll see we'll go, hey, we how things right. play out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not just us. It's the community. You know, Shout out to the community. They're, they're pretty um, vocal about these things and they love the game as much as we do. So... That being the case, uh, things that aren't... I say that a lot. 
You I've been the case yeah. so many times every week. I'm going to stab you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds brutal. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, PVE, Underground, Resistance, plenty of feedback. Um, I, I've not heard anybody really shout about issues with these. Um, I'm looking forward to playing the new directives. I didn't get a chance to play Underground. Rob, you did? No, I didn't. I, 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 I know, Luke intentionally did. didn't play it because I wanna, I'm looking forward to it. Um, in the live game. I'm really looking forward to Resistance. I'm not picking up Call of Duty this year. I'm going to be playing fucking Resistance. Um, and if they think it's in a good place, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's good for everybody. And yeah. But yeah. I mean, in general, it seems like, you know, Terry and Keith and the devs at Red Storm and Massive are pretty happy with update 1.8. And, you know, something I definitely felt that they were emphasizing on today was it's free at the end of the day. It's a free content update a year and a half later. Mm-hmm. And to have an update this big that includes an un- underground revamp, minor revamp, in my opinion, uh, skirmish, straight up 4v4 mode. It's what the community wanted. It's coming. It's for free. Expansion map, uh, expansion of the map, Westside Pierce. We've walked around it. It's freaking awesome. Hopefully they've got the timers down for the respawn of the NPCs up there now. I know they had plenty of feedback on that and resistance. It's, a, it's one thing that I did. This, I didn't watch the state of the game, but from what I've gathered, it's they're trying to remind people of all what the actual getting. shit that they are putting into the game rather than concentrating on the negatives. There's a couple of negative things that are coming out from this PTS, but this is just the nature of the community, I guess. But Oh, remember it, it, that it, no, there's you, a, a you're 100% shit, right. shit ton of content for us to play. Mm. Yeah. And I, it's another thing. I kind of felt like we were down after last week's um, state of the game because it was very brief and it kind of felt a little bit abysmal in post. And it was kind of like, how did they do so well for so many weeks? And then just go, and this definitely feels like, you know, they're trying to build, it definitely feels like a hype train movement. They're trying to bring, you know, hype the community up. Um, Twitch viewers were up this week because it seemed like people are, people are definitely still interested in this game. It It's awesome. And, you know, we're getting new lore and like the other thing as well today, they announced freaking Xbox One X support. I just, fucking stupid name. No offense to anybody that's thinking to get one, but it's a terrible freaking name. Um, why would you do that a year and a half after the game coming out? You know, you've got people shouting out there, dead game. That is going to take time and effort to support that. And they're doing that. I just hope all of this is really pointing towards the future. That's, that's all I can really say. Is everybody happy? I got to ask you guys, it's everybody, you know, in general happy with what we've got coming i know we haven't played it to death yet it's three months down the line we could be like on board but no i'm super hyped i can't wait there's loads of shit i want to play because i haven't played i'd like i i tried to stay away from the pts because i didn't want to ruin the experience so well, they yeah. don't call you captain enthusiasm for nothing do they no they don't i didn't know they called me that but yeah i'm i'm super hyped to play the game when it comes out 1.8 that is I know, I know Luke's looking forward to playing Rogue 2.0. So it, we, we've got so much fun to go, guys. Um, that being the case, <laughs> something I want to talk about very quick. Uh, That's four times this, this episode. I fucking hate At you. Least. It's going to be a key word. That being the case. <laughs> Topic of the week for this week. I think we might try and bring this in. I'm not sure. Um, I see a lot of posts on social media and that. Uh, with regards to the E3 2013 trailer. Um, and it kind of goes like this. Oh man, why haven't we got the game from back, you know, that trailer they showed back in 2013, blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of like, why are you guys still talking about this? We have a completely different game. Um, Luke, I know you read the article on Visceral Games. Yes. Um, and from Kotaku that they posted last week from the awesome Jason Schreier. Very good article, yeah. Right, some... Fucking good articles. Um, and it really does give insight into like game development and things like that. And I, if you haven't read it, definitely go check it out. But 
I mean, from my opinion, I just kind of want to say very briefly, like I truly believe that the footage from E3 2013 that was pretty much a tech demo. I really do think that was a tech demo um, to show you know Ubisoft higher ups what the team at Massive were building, what the engine could do, and what the game could eventually be given time and money. Um, that being the case. Uh, <laughs> It kind of seems like I fucking hate you, Rob. It seems like Ubisoft decided to show it to the public um, before the devs actually had a chance to even consider porting it or downgrading it so it could actually fit on consoles. And as a result, you know, it's changed. The graphics changed. People complain about the graphics all the time. Dude, play it on PC. It's the closest. All right, it's not 100%, but it's the closest to that trailer that you will ever get. It's fucking awesome. Um, it's beautiful. I'd be comp- I could be completely wrong on this, but I kind of think due to the over- overwhelming response that they had from that E3, and it also would have been around the time of a certain game that we also like to talk about on this game on this podcast, Destiny One. Um, with that being out there, it might have meant that they decided to like push up the release of the game. I mean, a lot of it was like unreleased or unfinished at the end of the day. So we didn't eventually get the game that was intended. I don't know how you guys feel about that. We didn't get the game we deserved. <laughs> I, 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 still, I still stand by that survival is currently the closest we have content to that original trailer. Hey, at least they didn't like repackage that game and make it a sequel. Well, you say that, but that could still happen. <laughs> True. Honestly, that could still happen. But it, it, it kind of feels like they got rushed. There might not have been Endgame, and then they slaps like gear sets, stuff for you to chase after, you know, you hit level 30, or it kind of everything was in there. And you look at how broke some of the stuff was between 1.1 and 1.4, and how everything just needed to like rework and there was so many talents reworked it was kind of like think of a talent eh, that's about right let's put that in there and i'm not saying like a lot of hard work into it lots of hard work in- went into it but there's so much stuff that just kind of felt thrown in there or you know you get so many people be like Wh- where's brooklyn where's the brooklyn you know area of the map where's the other content that you showed on the map where's the certain mechanics and it was like they had all these goals but never actually reached them and you know, with most cases with with game development, they always have like these huge big ideas, but n- they never always make it into the into the game due to time and, and, and money at the end of the day. Um, and that's why I was referring to the Visceral article because, and you know, you can go read the Destiny one as well that they've done. It, it it's just they, I keep seeing this argument come up, and it's like it doesn't make any sense to keep using that as justification. If you look at the trailers leading up to the release of the division, they are a lot more on point to what the game is now than anything before that. So, and yeah, it might not be the game in that trailer, and even with all its faults, it might be completely different. But I, I don't see that as a bad thing. I love the game we have now. I just want to say that. <laughs> that being the case, um... <laughs> <laughs> can I make a suggestion? <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me to fuck off aren't you no oh okay I was just going to say that's pretty much the end of the show news wise um, or division wise I mean if we've got enough time in a minute we might have an IFM from show to the IFM first because it is going to literally take seconds uh, yeah go for it I'll basically um, I had a I, I've don't, been, don't you mean that being the case that being Sorry, the case, I had an IFM. Well, I had an IFM this week. Um, it stems a little bit from when we had Taylor on the show, and also I've seen stuff on Reddit this week of talking about the same sort of thing. I may have told a little bit, maybe a little bit, maybe a lot. Do you want to apologise to Reddit while you're here? No, Reddit can suck my balls. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I think they they should they could implement. Um, a button on the UI somewhere. I, don't, I haven't really thought this out. 
where it activates all the um, uh, I want to say S and D's, S and D's, but I can't remember what they're called. Search and destroy, search and destroy, search and destroy missions. That's the ones. So it activates the whole map, right? You press a button, done. Rather than having to go to every safe house and activate, because when um, Taylor came on, he said one of his mates goes on, activates them all, and then clears the map. Be nice if there was a button that just did that, and you could then methodically clear the whole lot. It would populate the map a lot more. So even if you even if you were doing like um, an LZ boss run and you click the button, it would make that a little, a little bit more challenging, more fun. Um, and I think if you do clear the map, they could give you, they could, it could be like a weekly exotic classy cache. And you could also have accommodations attached to it as well. Thoughts, guys? I like it. Especially yeah. with the accommodation thing, because there is one for search and destroys, and I am not going to get that accommodation. <laughs> yeah, you have to get like a hundred or something. Yeah, it? it's something ridiculous. Yeah, so yeah, I, I like that. Um, the only critique I would give on that is if you're pressing a button to activate them all, can we make it so that you press a button and you choose how many activate all at once? So like five or ten or all of them. Just yeah, just give I it guess a little, you could do a little tweak um, um, per area, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Michael, yeah. uh, as much as I'm all for adding more stuff to the LZ, I mean, if you activate the whole map at the same time, I, I'm scared it might kill massive servers. Oh shit! I hadn't thought about that. I mean, I've just wouldn't it be if someone can act if you can go and activate them all um, via the safe houses, right? Then what's the what's the harm? No, I'm gonna say no. I don't like it. Fuck you. Stop being lazy. Fast travel. You lazy. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm on board. Lazy fast travel. Travel. Takes right, ages. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm on board. Like any anything that adds to the open world, um, and just makes you literally just walk around the the entire city would be awesome. And that's that's what I I want. We've said this before. We've kind of got it w- w- with West Side Pierce. Yeah, haven't we? There's just I know they're trying to put everybody over there in West Side Pier, but let's. I really hope if there's a future update, they apply it to the whole map because what, that, that the AI, should be across- the AI thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We said I, that yeah. before. What was it? Um, I can't remember what, what the AI found was, but I think it was a good idea. They got it. I okay. saw um, Bombshell Jackets put a tweet out this week that was if you could. Oh, I can't remember how they worded it, but basically, what is your one thing that you don't like about one point eight? And I can't remember if it was Deep Fried Dave or Naked Cowboy, Mike's Dumb Thoughts, whatever he's calling himself this week, said that they their one regret is that that new spawn system is not going to be retroactive for the rest of the map, which, yeah, that would be, it should be. really cool. Retroactive for the rest of the map. You you can trigger your search and destroys at the same... Dude, the map would be fucking lit mm. if you did that. You, you'd have named NPCs. It, there would be so much to do. And it would take, in my head... I just kind of have like the idea of when we first loaded into Manhattan as a fresh agent yeah. Yeah. and just clearing each sector, helping the JTF. Even that would be awesome. Um, I can't remember what they were. The instances where you had to go help the JTF. Reset that. Just reset the map. It would be like patrolling in Destiny, wouldn't it? I guess. Yes. Everything just gets re- it would get reset after a while. Yeah. Have a daily reset on it. I, I still stand by for what we said. That being the case. Anyway. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth, Robert. Should we move on to the questions that I've got to answer? Would you want me to introduce... I'll, I'll introduce you. So, last week, Robert laid down the gauntlet that you guys... You guys fucking smashed it. Uh, and I just More want to say, it. you know, huge shout out to everyone that sent questions in. Uh, Game of Weezer, Capitan... Uh, Boris, I'm pretty sure Spider did, Gus did, Foxy, uh, Foxy did. Huge shout out to all those guys. Thank you very much. Boris, and yeah, Boris definitely chat with them, did. Yes. Um, if you want to go chat to any of those guys, go check out our Discord or over on the Match Those Buttons Discord. That being said, <laughs> <laughs> Roberts, 
So do, do you want me to off? talk? The, do you want me to like say the questions and then answer them? Yes. Okay. It's not going to make a last question. If you don't answer. Ask the questions, is it? Um, you can't just answer the question and read it in your head. Well, no, dude. but like someone else could ask, so could ask them, and I could answer them. There's three no. You of said you were going to read right? all of them out. <clears throat> Fuck you. <laughs> okay. The first question. <laughs> first question um, says, "Do you think Massive owns a calculator?" Yes, but it's broken. Uh, second question: More combat or Street Fighter? More combat. Third question: Favorite fast food? Uh, Domino's Pizza. Fourth question: Best game you've ever, you've never played? What? That doesn't even make sense. But probably near Automata because I really want to play that game. It looks amazing. Fifth question: End sync or Backstreet Boys? Uh, no. Uh, sixth question what's what's one thing you dislike about playing with your co-hosts their yeah, chance well. uh, oh. seventh question <clears throat> have you had relations with Kevin Spacey yes he sucked my dick once um, eight if <laughs> if you had um, to choose one which of your co-hosts would you send to ETF Delta Ooh, that's a tough one. Myself, obviously. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Answer the question properly, motherfucker. <laughs> I bloody refuse. Uh, PUBG or Fortnite? PUBG always. Yes. Um, if you could move anywhere in the world, where would you live? Canada. You said... You um, sound really, like, confused by that question. Cats <laughs> or dogs? Move? Dogs. Cats are twats. Um, <laughs> something uh what's something americans do that you've always wondered about what um i don't really have answers to that accents what vote for idiots to be president yeah you know those <laughs> things um if you had to choose between console or pc for the rest of your uh, pc um, favorite, well, I don't know. That's a tough one because do I have an infinite amount of money to upgrade my PC? If not, then console. <laughs> 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 you, you, took that on, you took that on a fucking tangent, dude. Dude, with 13 TV questions shows, in, you, you the moment, a few um, to go. Um, Stranger Things season two. It's awesome. What? Westworld, dude. Come on. That's, that's old. Celebrity crush. Hmm. Kevin Spacey. Um, <laughs> team Hamish or Team Yannick? I, I reckon he's going Team Spacey. Just, no. On either of those. Um, favorite scary movie for Halloween? Um, can, I, can I do this one? Um, anything with, oh, you want to do one? Anything with Kevin Spacey? Hey? Eh? No. Anything with Kevin? <laughs> you can do scary movies. Um, scary movie. I watched it. What did I watch? It wasn't day? scary, but wasn't he in Hellraiser? Seven? I watched Hellraiser. That's pretty good. Old, but before my time as well. I was, that was out before I was born. That's a good film. Uh, what about Bill Clinton? That's not a question. <laughs> uh, blondes or brunettes? Brunettes. What's the funniest thing when you, what your co-hosts have done? Um, don't we're not know. very funny people, are we? Really? No, I can't answer that. Sorry, whoever, whoever asked that, I apologize. Disagree. Squirrel or squirrel? Definitely squirrel. Um, what's a conspiracy that interests you? Um. No. If Division 2 was being announced at E3 2018, would you go? No, because I'm getting married next year. I can't afford it. Um, if you could afford, if you could meet anyone dead or alive, who and why? What? I, I, I don't like, do you want either of you want to answer that question? Because I don't like questions like that. It's just... 
Stupid. Jake Gyllenhaal because he's in the Division movie, supposedly. There we go. Okay. And he's an awesome actor. Favorite cosplayer? Your mum. Favorite sports video game? Um, um, NBA Jam. That's an old one from SNES days. Favorite uh, movie trilogy? Matrix. Because... No. You can no, say no, no. every freaking line no, in the trilogy. What am I thinking? Um, Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Bings? No. I don't know. That's another tough one. I would like to say Star Wars, but that's kind of cliche. Not a trilogy. It? Not very original. It's not a trilogy either. Well, it was. Disagree. <laughs> you fucking add to that. You're the movie buff. I guess a uh, John Wick. It's not a trilogy. Yeah. It will be. You can't just have a go at Rob saying, naming something that got nine films in it when it's finished. Are you moaning about something that's not a trilogy? All right. Go for it, Luke. I, I would. If, if it had to be a trilogy, I would go with Matrix because I literally can't think of anything else that stopped at three. Because I, I really enjoyed the first three Scream films and then they made another no. one. Fuck you both. Fuck you both. Rush Hour. But they're making another one. <laughs> you literally just argued your own fucking point. <laughs> that being the case, um, <laughs> best gift you've ever received. Shit. Um... I don't know. I'm I'm pretty specific with gifts. Da, 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 um, probably da, da, the da, da, Destiny da, da, art book da, 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 that gave me. That's pretty pretty good. Um, guest you've always wanted to get on. Kevin Spacey. Um, cake or pie? Pie. Favorite film ever. Shit. It's got to be Matrix, dude. You knew it word for word. No, th th that just means I watched it too many times. Doesn't mean it's my favorite film. I, I, I literally can't answer that. I don't believe in favoritism. There you go. Country or rap? Uh, no. Embarrassing moment in your life? Um, I can think of one. Oh, yeah. That, that New Year's Eve where I got humped by lots of queer dudes. Um, no more explanation. Just leave it there. There we go. <laughs> My favorite streamer. Um, I like lots of streamers. I tend, I subscribe to Wids, so that yeah, I guess Wids. Good call. Uh, favorite podcast? Any genre? Bonus question. What? That doesn't make sense. Favorite I think podcast. I was edited wrong. Uh, favorite podcast? Ours, obviously. Um. <laughs> I don't listen to... What, you, any outside ours? Uh, if you could listen to one? Uh, the Weekly Planet. I, used to, I, I think as I don't listen to podcasts anymore, I don't know if The Weekly Planet's any good anymore, but it used to be hilarious. Um, Division or Destiny? I can't answer that question. Sorry. Don't believe in favoritism. Alleg Why are alligators so angry? Because they don't have a toothbrush? <laughs> um, <laughs> truth or dare well, it's not even a fucking question but dare come at me who's better I always or I are baboon fuck those what is the meaning behind year two and destiny two what that doesn't even make sense we aren't in year two you're not even year oh, whatever will anyone apart from Wiz use six piece hunter's face set no can you fire a duck from a potato can? Probably. Is anyone going to use Striker now? I won't because I still haven't got six piece. Um, do you think a certain YouTuber sounds like Kermit the Frog? No, I don't. That is a popular opinion, but I don't think he does. Um, best classified build for you, Sit Rep Rob, PvP versus PvE. What? I like Lone Star. Lone Star's awesome. I stand by that. Uh, DZ Ninja Bag. 
build currently running? Um, I'm running a two tack two banshee with vigorous. Uh, which classified will you be looking out for the next the next G? I don't even know what the next G classifieds are going to be. Probably tactician though, if that's one of them. <laughs> Predators mark if that's one of them. <laughs> yeah, I will try and get all of them, but. Because I'm like that. Can you find a Rainbow Man in Where's Waldo book? Um, I don't know what a Where's Waldo book. I know what a Where's Wally book is, but I don't know what a Where's Waldo book. I thought Waldo was the bad guy in the Where's Wally books. Maybe that's an Americanism. <laughs> it's like the American version. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking stitch. Wrong, wrong question. 49, guys. You still awake? Uh, what is the answer to the life of... The universe the and everything. Do you want me to give you a hint? Um, as, well, you it actually know with, the answer. It starts with a certain number. It starts with a certain number. Come on. What, I'm helping you 42? here. 42? That's Next question. That's from a film, though. <laughs> you sound so unsure, dude. If I recall I seasons... What, hang on. If I recall both seasons... Of Stranger Things onto a 90 minute VHS tape. How many tapes would I need and would I be cooler for watching on VGS? Six? Yes. Uh, would, <laughs> when should I add my spices to my Belgium's pumpkin brown ale? Now, definitely now. Can you show us on the doll where Mr. Spacey touched you? Oh, yes, I can. But I'm not going to. Um, do you think Massive is just rotating O penis around the different gear set so that you have to get the current OP set? This is what I said earlier of the season until they nerf it to the ground. Yes. They know how to move the meta. Does Massive know that that the opposite of nerfing is buffing? Yes, of course they do. Who said the catchphrase cartoon cartoon? Fuck knows. Have you ever had sex with Squeak's mum? No. What do you think of Rampersy's beard? It's very full and luscious. How French is Captain? Very, very French. As French as a baguette. garlic and a beret. And a striped blue t-shirt. <laughs> Is Sit Rep Rob the real Sit Rep Rob? Yes. I think I answered that in Discord. Uh, do you think there will be a Division 2? <sighs> Maybe. That's it. That's it. That's 60 questions. Done. Wow. I give me that, dude. Fuck me. I'm in stitches at the end of that. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> If you didn't like my questions, or my, oh no, sorry, if you didn't like my answers, then ask more <laughs> questions. And I'll Are you saying double or week. nothing? Really? I'm not, do I'm saying not doing 120. <laughs> you can fuck off. Surely you learned your lesson already. You've just asked them more questions, you idiot. <laughs> no, but not, not 60, but like, keep them going. It's good fun. Yeah, any random questions, I think we're good. <laughs> Well done, Rob. I give you that, dude. You Thanks. did good. I practiced all day. <laughs> uh, and before we leave, Luke, we have a new segment we're going to try and bring to the show. Uh, yeah. Next week, possibly. Certainly not every week, but um, we, we've had a few requests recently over Discord and, and Twitter and whatever for us to talk a, quite a lot more about builds, what we're running, what we'd like to run what scenarios we run them in or whatever. So, yeah, I think we're going to start that up next week, aren't we? Yeah, and it won't be... We're going to try not to do... Oh, here's my build. It's a good build. Enjoy. Yeah, we'll, it's good. We're going to try and run into a little bit more yeah. detail than we normally would. So, hang tight, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to give you some details on builds for 1.8 and beyond. That being the case, yeah. where can listeners find us, Rob? 
That's a question um, you can answer. Um, can I just, before we leave, like, I just want to say, go check Reddit out. It's been really positive this week. Um, it's, it's quite contrasting because I, I visit, I visit literally two Reddits, Destiny and Division. And one is very negative at the moment and one is very positive and the one that's positive is the Division. I, it's, it's quite surprising that really because of the sort of people that the Division attracts. Yeah, and there's lots of like, which I didn't realise happened, there's lots of posts of like gear swapping. I didn't even know yeah, that was a thing. Yeah, people have been meeting up in the dark zone and um, being like, hey. That's really cool. Right. Um, sorry, what was I supposed to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, you can find us at Sitrep Radio on Twitter and Facebook. Tweet us with the hashtag Team Sitrep. As we are all affiliated with the hashtag, if you can understand what I just said. If you have any questions, yay, um, or feedback for the show, send them to the email address, sitroradiopod at gmail.com. Luke? Or even for Rob himself, just send them on over. Yeah. And we'll pass them on to him. And I'm sure he will get back to you next week. Go yes, for it. It's at Sitrep Radio Rob, isn't it, Rob? On Twitter, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, you can find Sitrep Radio podcasts on any of the following platforms iTunes, Apple Podcasts for iOS, Google Play Music, SoundCloud. Overcast for iOS, Stitcher, Player.fm, Pocket Casts, RSS Feeds, Podbeam, and please rate, review, and subscribe while you're there. Can I also quickly give another shout out to the guys over at Loot and Shoot Inc.? That's at Loot and Shoot Inc. on Twitter. Um, it's a collection of streamers, content uh, providers, and apparently us podcasters. Um, so yeah, go and hit us up. Thank you. While you're over, while you're checking out, mash those buttons and ourselves make sure to go check mash those buttons out on <laughs> facebook twitter and youtube and check out some of the other awesome podcasts that are a part of the mash those buttons family uh watch point radio doing an awesome job at the minute and they're also putting out a prepare to attack series which is helping you the player deal with overwatch and the insane amount of characters they they keep adding to that so you can hear those guys interview some of the best players in the community and make you a better player as a result. That being the case, we also do a YouTube video once a week and occasionally the IFM video. Uh, come, come show your support up there. Send us a link, subscribe link, what a like and subscribe. That'd be awesome. Tell your friends, tell your mum, all that shit. Thanks, Trent. <laughs> And thank you, agents, for listening. I will catch you soon. Soon. Bye, Rob. Bye-bye. <laughs>